get the best in romance. Too scared to stand there by myself. And don't expect thought-provoking drama. Don't get killed. You too. But what we can promise is fully loaded action. Are you gonna kill him? Not right now. Maybe later. Tanked up with high octane, high fives, and heroes. I'm not gonna shoot till they shoot at us, partner. It's like one of those video games. You just defeated the first wave. To teach you how to kick some serious. So learn from the masters. Dolph Lundgren. You won't see me coming. And Brandon Lee. Oh, that's perfect. Star in Showdown in Little Tokyo. Now, one of these in the some sushi club. Where Kenner and uh, Murata end up heading over to. And of course that's the one where they go into the club and of course he gets interest by punching a guy in the face. And then uh Kenner, you know, he's just like, No, hello what? <laughs> I was just like, That's awesome, Mike, come on man, that's just badass. You just just enter into the place. Can you imagine just walking into some place? You're you know, walking into some club, punching the bodyguard in the face and just walking in. <laughs> so anyway, he basically they go into the club and you have this whole sequence. They have all this, you know, crazy. You know, there's like all these topless chicks walking around. There's these topless chicks basically, you know, wrestling with each other in uh, fucking sumo wrestling outfits. You have, you know, these naked chicks laying down on tables with sushi on their pussies and, you know, other shit. And guys are eating it. Old Chinese dudes are eating it with chopsticks. And it's kind of like. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like, ew, in a way. They're like, you know, it wouldn't there be some of the pussy juices on the fucking sushi? This is kind of nasty. I don't know if I want to eat sushi that way. Maybe on the titties, but I don't know. Down there, I don't know. Is she wearing a bikini? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. There. So anyway, they walk in. They want to talk to the owner of the club, Yoshida. And then all hope breaks loose. Yakuza show up. And the fucking Kenner and uh, Murata go to work. So they're kicking some ass. And it's awesome. It's not shaky cam bullshit. You see the fights. They're, you know, they're practical. They're they're realistic. They're a lot of fun. You know, Murata does a flip in the air. You know, you have the moment where uh, it, Kenner gets like that, you know, it's like a tray or something. Beats the shit out of some guy. That cool moment where, you know... You know, uh, Murata, you know, Brandon Lee, he's got some guy, he's about to, you know, clothesline him, basically, and Kenner kicks a chair underneath him, and then Murata just kicks him in the face, and he's like, yeah! And it's just like, it, you know, his enthusiasm, Brandon Lee's enthusiasm in this movie is infectious. It's like, you, it's like you're having the, you're having a lot of fun with the movie enough as it is, and the fact that it seems like Brandon Lee is having an absolute blast and a half with this film, too, it just adds to the, you know, the, the, the entertainment value of this movie. So then basically, after they get out of the club, <laughs> he basically, um, Kenner has this great, actually it's Murata, you know, he has this great line. And he's like, you know, we do this right like a cop in the 20th century. And that's some warrior. We're going to get this guy. And when we're done, we're going to go eat fish off those naked chicks. <laughs> Uh, great lie. So then basically they decide to, you know, they team up and kick some ass. And then go in and uh, corner uh, Ushida in some bathhouse and you have a cool fight there. And you, have, you know, there's a fight. Dolph Lundgren fights some big chubby head motherfucker. And he's stomping on his toes, punching him in the stomach a few times. He stabs him in the ch in the stomach on boys underwater, fighting underwater, but it's still not enough. The guy still comes back. And so, you know, Dolph Lundgren just simply just takes a fucking fire hose and just puts it in his mouth. Which basically, you know, probably officiates him to death. Drowns him, basically. And then, uh... Then you basically get her, you know, of course at the club, too. They got introduced to Tia Carrera. You saw her. and She basically, what happens is... Yoshida, he likes her, so he's just like, You are mine! You know, you're mine! You mind now? <laughs> I mean, that really is like, oh, you know, he shows her the tape of Angel getting decapitated. You know, if you protest, 
This will happen to you. So happen to you. This is the way it's been. Yeah. You know, you can be the Gawa. Just imagine every time anybody's acting with them, you know, they're just too much spit is probably flying everywhere. You know, you. Yeah. This is imagine just be. Oh God, cut! I think I got. I think he spit in my eye. So anyway. So anyway, um, basically, she freaks out. And Tia Carrera is thinking about killing herself, doing seppuku. But Dolph Rundgren, he's showing up at an apartment, the little complex she's at, the house. And he sees it, so he decides to do something about it. And he just epically mows down motherfuckers. You know, he does that scene where he's rolling and shooting, and it's cool. And, you know, he shoots some guys in the hallway with a big gun. This sort of reminds me of the sequence is a raw deal. And then he goes and saves the girl before she's about to kill herself. Puts her in the back of his car, drives away. He basically lifted up a fucking convertible with his bare hands and used it as, like, a shield. And then he's driving away with the girl in tow, and he fucking shoots the fucking convertible, and goes, boom, big explosion. It's, it's really cool. And then, basically, then, you know, what happens is, if I remember correctly, oh, yeah, that moment where you get to see uh, Dolph Lundgren's house which is a really nice little Japanese style house, you know. And it's got all the, you know, the Japanese styles, you know, like the whole, you know, rice paper walls and things like that. And he has a little moment with uh, with Tia Carrera, and, you know, in the bath, in the little hot tub. And <laughs> Murata has another great, you know. It's just basically another, uh, there's a really good, uh, line, you know, basically, we're talking about the hot tub. It's like, she's like, hey, she was frightened. Yeah, I saw you strip down for the hot, that hot tub. I'd be frightened too. This is so much fun. So then basically what happens is Tatsu shows up and they start wreaking havoc at, the, at Kenner's place and <laughs> they have this great line. Which is really fucking weird, but it's still great. And before it actually is this really cool moment where basically Johnny Murata, he's all, you know, Brandon Lee's like, and you had to, after these bad guys came and they shot some of them, Murata's all like, you know, it's kind of like one of those video games. You just defeated the first wave. Kenner's like, do you know you have moments when you're truly an asshole? <laughs> and then they have this moment, which is great. We're, you know, they're getting outnumbered here. You know, we got a problem here. There are more bad guys than we've got bullets. Kenner, just in case we get killed, I wanted to tell you, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. Thanks. I don't know what to say. How about don't get killed? Don't get killed. You too. <laughs> just like, what the fuck? I mean, I still, like, when I first saw this movie... Because I actually, the first time I saw this, I rented it on VHS from uh, a rental store over in Arizona when I was spending the spending a couple weeks with my grandparents. And they were letting me rent whatever the hell I wanted to at the store. It was real cool. That's how I first saw Prison. That's how I first saw this. That's how I first saw Flesh and Blood with uh, Rucker Hauer. So was, that's how I first saw Moon Trap, remember correctly? So just really a lot of fun to show down a little Tokyo. It was a lot of fun when I saw it. I was like, after I saw it, I was like, wow, that was really good. That was pretty fucking awesome. So then, you know, watching it again, it's just as awesome as it was back in the, you know, when I stayed and watched it at my grandparents' house. So basically getting back to the movie, the plot and everything, after, you know, the whole quote, which everybody remembers, you know, personal endowment quote. is like, you're the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. It's just like, what the fuck? Just imagine Dolph Lundgren be like, huh? <laughs> but I mean, really, it's kind of a clever satire of what people thought these action movies were back in the day. They thought they were just homoerotic fantasies. So it's like the script streamer is just like, oh yeah, you think so? All right, well, I'll just, you know, have this quote in there. And it's, it's really badass because it really shows how comfortable these guys are in their in their sexuality. I mean, it's just like they're just willing to fucking compliment each other's dick sizes. They're just like, we're badasses. We don't give a fuck. We, we can talk about dicks all day long. And, you know, sad, you know, in a way, you know, me and my friends, you know, we talk about, you know, dicks, 
but you know it's in a negative way you know like this movie sucks dick or things like that but it doesn't mean that we're like we're we love dicks it just means that we're comfortable enough to talk about it without feeling gay and so that's that's kind of like what you know Kenner was doing no not Kenner kind of what uh, Murata was doing with Kenner no, they weren't going to go in the back room later and, 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 you know, get it on. That's not it. If you have any images like that, I don't know what the hell is wrong with your head, but hey, to each their own. So, so anyway, getting off this uh, weird, awkward tangent here.